coming back at you now with um, some short videos on some things that I like to do in the classroom with math. Okay, so little bowling set, $8.98 at Walmart when you can find it. All I did, write on it with dry erase markers. And this has been on there a while, so it's not gonna come off unless I use magic eraser on it. But if I use the magic eraser, it'll come right off. You can program these with addition problems, subtraction problems, um, numbers. You could put um, like base 10, you know, draw the tens and ones on here, whatever. So you could set them up, roll, go five or six feet away, however much room you have, they can roll the ball whatever ones they knock down then they have to tell their partner like for example on this one I, if my i rolled and i knocked this one down i would have to read the number sentence to my partner and tell them the answer five plus five equals ten if i knock three or four of them down i have to tell three or four of them set them back up then it's my partner's turn easy you can program them with like i said any kind of math um problem computation that you want okay Next activity, you need a Dollar Tree tray that's divided. I have a bucket of little items. And these are just items that I had laying around. I did not go buy these items specifically for this. And tongs, you can buy these either two or four for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And so I just keep the tongs in the bucket and sort. Now, I know that sorting in itself is pretty easy for first graders most of the time, but they, they not only need the help with sorting, but they also need um, practice with those fine motor skills. We have so many of our first graders who come and really need help with that. So we sort, um, I've got some other little things in here. And it is not allowed for you to pick up a whole bunch of stuff at one time, not allowed. You have to pick up one thing at a time, put it in there, then um, I'm gonna go around if it's stations or uh, my assistant will, or you have to tell a friend, well, why did you sort them this way? Well, I put all of the, the you know, pom-poms together, I put all the blocks, uh, Legos together, I put all the little tiny beads together. Okay, great, put them back in, sort them a different way. I think that's where it really um, challenges them a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna sort by color or I might sort by, you know, soft and hard. Also, if they're really good with their right hand, use their left hand. A lot of kids will need that extra help with their um, non-dominant hand. So, you know, this time I might sort by color. Next time I might sort by something else. And I always have them tell me how they're sorting it. Okay, couple more ideas. So you've probably seen these, but I, I just thought, you know, they're really good. I wanted to show some of these are some things that, um, my teacher neighbor bestie here and I um, presented at a conference a couple years ago and I have actually used in my classroom since so this one I keep it <laughs> I keep it taped together on the back until we use it but we just had actually we had the kids our own kids draw um, a little scene on popsicle sticks and then what we do is we numbered them on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is great for um, number sequencing, especially those lower little babies who are really still having trouble sequencing to ten. Because yes, we do get them in first grade. And I know you've got them in kindergarten if you're watching. And then after they sequence the numbers and put them in order, then they can flip each one over. And if they've made the picture, then they know they got it right. You can also, this one, my tape's coming, my tape's not real good here, <laughs> this has been used quite a bit, but you can also, um, say, tape together popsicle sticks and have the student draw their own scene on one side, flip it over, write the numbers on the back, take the tape off, and let them uh, sequence it. Something else I know you've seen before, number line on, get that a little closer, on the Ziploc. So, okay, eight take away three. You could just have a whole lot of these little cards to put in there and take one at a time out. Um, this works great one-on-one -on -one when you're really trying to get a, a student to, um, you know, work with you, maybe focus, give them a little something fun, a little hands-on. So they start, you have to have the Ziploc bag with the, um, the zipper at the top. So start at eight, count backwards three. What's your answer? Eight take away three equals five. A lot like using the number lines on the um, board and stuff, but just gives them another visual to see. 
and then okay, one more idea that is cheap and easy, just counting with paper plates. So I just took a paper plate, tied a piece of yarn to it, and randomly put the numbers on this one is counting by tens around the outside. And all they do, the student does, is lace it counting by tens. So right now I'm on coming out of 40. After 40 is 50. It has to go, since it's on the front, it has to go in the front. And sometimes my string on this one's pretty long, I think. And then 60, so I find 60, and I have to come from the back since it's on the back. Oops. And then 70, 80, 90, 100. And the great thing about these, here's one that's already done. If you draw the lines on the back after it's done, it's self-checking for the student. So I have these colored. I really wish I had just done these in um, written the numbers on the front in different colors, but I have them color coded for tens, twos, and fives. You could also do these, like say one to 20, or if you, you know, your standard is like ours and it's um, count to 120 from any number, maybe start it at 99 and go up or something like that. So these are really cheap and easy, easy to store. Yes, they might tear, but you know what? They're paper plates, make another one. And I just put a clip on them and store them like this. Well, when they're all <laughs> laced up. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.